All right, Shalom. I like to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. I like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's whole four legs scattered abroad, teaching his word in Sicilian truth. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War, back at you again with another lesson. And um, this lesson, you know, I'm just going to speak. I have one scripture, but I want to, you know, recap on what happened yesterday. And uh, brothers was in camp, as we do every week, prophesizing, you know, the downfall of this place, which you call America, which is known as Babylon the Great, exhorting the Lord's name, you know, fulfilling Isaiah 58 and 1, cry out loud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show the Lord's people their transgressions, you know. And uh, there was a chariot, you know, there was a, basically a cloud right above the camp as brothers was prophesizing. And, uh, you know, I looked up and I noticed a strange cloud and, and a certain, you know, chariot formation, chariot uh, shape in a way. Right. And I was like, hold on. That's probably a, You know, that's that's probably a. You know, it was a cloud, but I said, that's probably a chariot behind that or disguising. So I tapped the brother to my right, which was the brother Kalab. And I said, yo, look at that. Yo, that's that's probably a chariot, man. And he was like, yeah, yeah. You know, he was speaking. Then I tapped the brother, you know, later on, he kept speaking. Then I tapped the brother to the left, which was Shar. And I was like, Shar. I was like, yo, this is a chariot, man. It's probably a chariot. And he was like, yeah, you know, look like a chariot and shit. So then now, all right, you know. We, we prophesizing, continuing to teach, you know, our focus is the word. And um, I look up again, which was probably, <laughs> probably only three minutes, three minutes. I look up again, the cloud had moved. I'm talking about, it moved. <laughs> it moved quick, three minutes. All right. The cloud moved quick. And so I tapped the brother again. Brother Shaw said, yo, that's a chariot, brother. <laughs> he was like, oh, shit, the cloud moved, you know, it moved. He was like, yo, that's a chariot. So we all, you know, souped up. Hey, all praise out by some out shot. And then, you know, we go back to prophesizing again. And another two, three minutes again, it was completely gone. Completely gone. All right. We know through the spirit that that was a chariot of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai watching over brothers in the camp, you know, and, and, and watching us prophesize. Man, yo, we are truly at the end of this thing. And oh, man, I'm just I'm thinking about this is getting me excited, man. All right. <laughs> because we're at the end. This is it, brothers. This is truly it. All we're waiting upon is the prophecies, man. Uh, another thing I want to speak about before I grab the scripture, you know, Lord willing, this this uh this episode be edifying to those of the whole for elect. You know, may it build upon your faith. You know, may you, you know, build upon you know strength. You know, in your faith toward your how about you shot. Now, the night came, brothers at the camp. You know, I'm on my daily about doing what I do, whatever, and um happen to be getting gas. Uh, over here, of course, in the north, and and phew, it looked like the purge. These niggas out here is crazy, and and it just had a quick gloomy, you know, like a spirit. You know, I'm speaking to you brothers like this because I'm just trying to describe it to the best of my ability. It was like a, you know, the feeling that came upon me and, and the person that was with me. When we was in, at this gas station getting this gas, <clears throat> that something was going to happen. And I never felt it, you know, felt the spirit come upon you. Like you had this, 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 you felt scared, but it was gloomy. It was, it was dark, sinister. It was, it was a spirit in the air. And my first thing when I got my gas, I'm getting up out of here. I'm getting up out of here. I'm going. All right. And what happened was, as we was getting gas and I, you know, I got my gas and I'm coming out of the parking lot, 
this kid was running. You know, he had no belt on. And he was he was looking back as if you know. At first, I said, "Wait, wait, he must have stole something." And shit, he's running from somebody, right? And he's running, running, and he dipped and hiding behind you know a store and stuff, you know. And I'm like, "What the fuck?" So I'm looking back to see what he's looking back at, you know. And you know, nothing's happening. I'm like, he probably stole some freaking niggas, boy. But then all of a sudden. All these dudes came out of nowhere, and I'm talking about it looked like the movie Purge. They came out in these stolen cars, dudes on mopeds, one dude driving the car with a ski mask on, and they been in the block. They 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 doing slides in the street looking for this dude. I'm talking about like they was the police, like if they was the police, you know, and then you had police. They knew about it. They had the the helicopter outside, you know, and it was they was deep. It was four, five, six, seven cars. You had guys on bikes, mopeds, uh, uh them, you know, them little bikes they be riding and um trying to chase after this kid. And the conclusion that you know came up was like they must was gonna murder this dude, you know. And that's where that spirit came from, you know. And that's why we I felt we felt it. It was like what the fuck. So I say all that to say this, man. You know, the time is that we're at the end. That's it, man. This is it, you know. And I know these things happen from time to time, but, you know, this is the end. The end of America, man. The end of you Edomites. So I'm going to read this quick scripture. This is Habakkuk chapter 2 and 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. And I will watch to see <clears throat> what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. So this is what we've been waiting on. All us brothers of the whole four elect through the four corners, dispersed through the through the countries, through this world. All right. We as watchmen set up, you know, to, to see we we're, we're set up to sit upon that tower and to see what the Lord is going to say unto us when it comes according according to what? The prophecies. All right. And we're at the time you got World War Three boiling like no other, you know, any day now. You know, the brother Kalab in the camp, he made a, a good point. He said, uh, he said, uh, no, you know, they probably more than likely won't declare that war until they issue a draft first because they're going to need people. They're going to need a whole lot of men and women to fight for them, you know. So that's something to think about. But you see, it's boiling, man. It's brewing. All right. It's like you having a pot on and it's. And it's sizzling, you know, where you probably probably need to turn it, turn it down. But this ain't getting turned down. It's going to get turned up. All right. America's going to be fried, man, by the way of thermonuclear missiles. All right. And also by the chariots of the Lord, you know, the angels of the Lord. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon a tower and I will watch to see what he will say unto me. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. So when we are corrected, the Lord will talk to us. He'll let us know through his prophecies. Because what our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, taught us, he said to watch, be sober, be vigilant. You know, he gave us signs in which the time we, we should know what, what time we're living in. He said, when you see all these signs pass, then you shall know that at the very same time, this is when the highest will begin to visit the earth in which he made. All right. And yesterday it was I, I it, it was a deaf spirit in the air. I've never seen niggas over here. I never witnessed that. I seen niggas go crazy. Niggas do stupid stuff, stuff that you won't even think about. But yesterday it was a purge on this kid, man. And he must have got away because I ain't seen nothing. Nobody sent me nothing. Far as somebody died over here, but the cops, they was out there, they blocking streets off because these police over here, no, nope, they can't control these niggas. They can't control them. These dudes, they ganging up, they too deep. And when it comes to stolen cars, they no longer chase them. They can't chase them because these police know if <laughs> they know if they put chase to these guys in these cars, these dudes will run up on a sidewalk and kill whoever's in the way. When you see a car doing, oh my, yo, it's a spirit, man. You can feel it, man. When you see it in person, 
and how and you see the, the the demon that's on that dude, you know. Just, just, just like, 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 like the cars is toys and people out here, you know, it's like a game where you can get another chance at life. Like it's bad, man. And it's getting worse. And I was just thinking all, everything that was going on, I was just thinking about when this shit hit the fan. All right. When this shit actually go down and you looking for food and water, police, police ain't going to be here to save you. They're going to have to have uh, military police, you know, to, uh to regulate these people because it's going to be an all-out war, all right? And I'm talking about Jake on Jake. Before the race war, eventually them Edomites going to come and start picking niggas off until these niggas get their head together and, and, and band together to go against Esau. But just, just being in the midst of that yesterday, it was like, yeah, it's scary, man. I mean, it's scary, you know? The scriptures say the righteous shall scarcely be saved. Now, does that mean that, you know, I'm I'm scared? No, but in a moment, yeah, you're going to be scared, man. But guess what? Our faith is going to get us through, man. You know, and I'm not saying scared to be chicken up and bitching up. I'm just saying, you know, the, that sudden fear, you know, that sudden, you know, your hair stand up where you know you got to get the fuck out the way. All right. But that's why we pray and do these shows and. Do what the Lord told us to do, so the most may the most high have mercy upon us, man. You people don't realize what's coming. You can't see it, you can't feel it, you can't taste it. The Lord got you blinded. All right. He said he's gonna come like a thief in the night. All right. When sudden destruction come upon you, all right, that's gonna be the great tribulation. Okay. Jacob's trouble. And these and and, and yo, you niggas don't know what's coming, man. All right. May the Lord have mercy on his elect. This is verse two. And the Lord Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read of it. So what we do is we watch. We see what the Lord saying to us. He speak to us. And then we go into the scriptures and we break it down plainly. We do our epistles through our videos. All right. Our letters through our videos. We communicate with each other. You know, we putting out. What the Lord have gave us to talk about. Because the elect need to be warned. The most high is warning the elect. But the two thirds of our people, you're blinded. You know, the scriptures say he that is in trouble rests with us. He that heareth the most high heareth us. All right. If you don't straighten up your act, you still playing around with this thing. You backsliding. Niggas that never truly repented, but you in the truth. Out there prophesizing, talking that the two thirds gonna be destroyed, and you ain't right, nigga. You getting destroyed, being a a freaking hypocrite, man. You know, this is real serious biz, man. This is some real serious seriousness going on, man. Your life is on the line, man. Take this truth seriously, man. Don't play. You know, be in tune into yourself. All right, the scriptures say count the cost. This is not for views and likes. We're not YouTubers. I'm not a YouTuber. This message from YouTube that we use as a, a tool, all right, that the Most High set it up for us to use it, all right, is to spread forth the message through the elect across the world, all right? Whoever the Lord allowed to see these videos and to pick up this information, this is for you. The rest of you going to die of a grievous death, and that's straight up. You can leave a salty comment, you know, and say what you want to say, but feelings and emotions ain't going to change the fact that, you know, Yahweh Shai uh, is coming. He's coming. All right. That's why you got to take it seriously, man. You got to talk to brothers, you know, talk to brothers certain ways because this truth is serious, man. Stop playing. I did a lesson um, last week or this week um, about staying focused, man. You got to say fuck everything else, man, and stay focused on the prize. You know, right now is the time to clean up, you know, and to, to strive to be strive for your perfection, strive to mastery, which you should have always been. But even now, even tighten up, you know. You know, even if you um, 
you know, you, you went off in sins and you don't want to let your sins weigh you down. You want to do more good than do more of sinning. We, we sin, we go off, you know, we're not perfect, but we're striving for perfection. And if, and if you, excuse me, and if you're striving for perfection, you're doing more for the good, you know, of your how about shimmy out shy. So anyway, verse three, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. And that's this, and that's the prophecies, man. That's Yahweh Shai coming. Okay, that's Jacob's trouble. All right, that's World War Three. You, you we truly are at the end of this thing, man. Whether it be a year left, it's over. It's over. It's no 2065. All right, in which these Edomites putting their articles and thinking that at that time we all going to be microchip. Get the hell out of here. You don't have that long, man. It's 2019. We're going into 2020. How dare you think that far? You out of your damn mind. When we about to go into a third world war. When they, when these Edomites, these elites, they even stage their own doomsday clock. And they, and, and they serious about it. It's not a game. They're not having a doomsday clock and... And and uh and and it's just a joke. They put it on your fluff news and they and they announce it as real reality. This this is what's going on. They are predicting that doomsday. What is doomsday? Armageddon. People gonna die. Nigga, you gonna die if you ain't right with your how about shooting your shot. This ain't no game. You could Google doomsday if you don't know about it. Doomsday clock. And I think they're saying with two minutes or something. Don't quote me on it. I forgot the minutes, but I know we we damn near close to midnight, man. Doomsday. All right. So as scriptures say, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Yes, the vision, the prophecies, man. All right. It's coming to pass. The force of the RFID microchip, they will force it upon you. Okay. Whether they do it. Through the act of, uh, well, this is my humble opinion. You know, I don't know how the Lord is going to do it detailedly. We don't know that. But my humble opinion, you know, if they stage the war, declare it, draft, declare it. You know, they got every right to send martial law, state of emergency. You getting forced by taking it to a concentration camp. You know, then they can easily just force it upon you. You know, because it's going to be an uproar when they do force it upon you. Regardless, it's going to be an uproar. People are going to rebel. It's going to be a fight. You Edomites not chipping everybody. You know, if you don't take this chip, they're going to deem you as a terrorist. They're going to put people to death. They're going to make examples to make people fear so they can easily take it. But people still going to rebel. All right. You know, but it can happen anyway. They're going to force it. The scriptures tell you he calls of all. Both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in his right hand or his forehead. So it says he causeth. Who is the he? Esau. And causeth, meaning he's going to force it. He's going to cause you to get it. All right. But according to Revelations 3 and 10. All right. Matter of fact, let me get that. I'll come back to that. Got to read these scriptures. Revelations chapter 3 verse 10 it says because thou has kept the word of my patience I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation what is that talking about it's talking about the hour of temptation which is the microchip when they force it upon you it says which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth and if you people stop being so simple you always want to quick to mock the word and looking for ways to that ain't true or this and that man People outside of America are being chipped right now willingly. It's more people probably chipped outside of America than it is people here in America. Look at Sweden. Look at East. Uh, look at uh, the East Indians. Look at China. This is real, man. The mark of the beast is the RFID microchip. And that's shame on you guys that's out there. All right, you teaching the truth that we're Israelites, but you're not teaching the full truth. You leaving this? You leaving these people to believe that they could take this chip? If you're saying you can't, if you're saying that it's not the mark of the beast, you leaving them to take it. That's why you, hey, fulfilling the scriptures of false prophets, man. It says, "Which say, 
which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown, meaning your salvation. Because if you was promised a crown, you was promised to be in who? The elect. Which Yahweh Shah is going to place a crown upon the elect's head. The men. So if someone takes your crown, and really you just never was of the elect. Eh? Okay? It says, verse 12, him that overcome will I make a pillar in the temple of my power. And he shall go no more out. I will write upon him the name of my God, my power. <clears throat> and the name of the city of my power, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my power. And I will write upon him my new name. All right. So let me get back to Habakkuk. And I end it with that as I was originally, originally was, you know, uh, three. So it says, right, it says Habakkuk two and three for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. See, the prophecies are not lying. The scriptures are not lying. You know, you got people, you got our people believing in the Quran, talking about Muhammad was the last prophet. Muhammad ain't no prophet. All right. The Bible don't talk about no Muhammad. OK. The Quran claims the Bible. The Bible does not claim the Quran. All right. Get it right, man. The Bible has all the prophecies. Yahweh Shai. The gospel is in what? The Bible, not the Quran. So go ahead and keep believing in that. And you're going to see these prophecies come to pass and you're going to be swept by these prophecies, by the peasants, by the unknown creatures. Scriptures talk about a Jeremiah 15 to the death to death to the sword to the sword. You're appointed death. All right. You're going to play a part in this movie. All right. So it says, but at the end, it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry, because it seems like it tarry. You know, it, it be popping off and then it brewing and brewing and it die down. Then another year go by. Then another year go by. All right. Then it brew and it brew. But the Lord said, what? Though it tarry, wait for it. You got to wait. Scriptures tell us to be patient. Yahweh Shai said, uh, 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 wait for me till I stand up to the prey. We can't do this thing by ourselves. There's no revolution where we're going to get guns and go take Esau down like these Israelite rappers. Retarded dudes, man. And, a lot, and I've been hearing stories about them guys, but hey, you know, you dudes are wicked as hell, man. Threesomes and... <laughs> but anyway, right? That shit is crazy, man. It says, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. So these prophecies are going to come, and it's not going to tarry when it comes, man. That's it. That's why the Lord described uh, the prophecies like a travailing woman, a woman that's pregnant. Because when that baby is coming out, there's no taking a break. There's no time out. There's no wait, wait, wait. When the baby is coming, it's coming. You got to deal with it until it's fully come through, you know, fully, fully pass over. So. You know, I hope this lesson was edifying, man. It was one crazy night yesterday, but beautiful. You know, in the beginning in camp, we saw a chariot hovering right above us. Then it disappeared out of nowhere. You know, that 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 gives us more faith, man. You know, the Lord was I he was eyeing us, man. We must be doing something good. All right. All us brothers around the world, we out there doing the works, man. And the angels are watching. They're reporting. The Lord sees us, man. We're not don't we not counted out, man. The Lord sees us, man. He truly sees us. He's watching us. Just imagine what he's saying, man, about us, man. You know, you know, man, yo, how beautiful it is to, if, you know, if you have the hope of you of the whole for elect, man, you know, um, then, you know, that night it got ugly, you know, the dark came and then the really darkness was out in the streets yesterday. It was the purge over here, man. I don't know where these guys came from. I don't know what's going on. But these niggas was out to kill this kid. And they was like seven cars deep, dudes with masks on. And they was ripping the streets like they was the police. They ain't cared nothing about no police. They ain't cared nothing about no police. They was just circling around, looking, running up and down, run, run, back and forth like they own the street. Like they ain't have a care in the world. So I can imagine when this shit pop off out. Just, just a glimpse, man. You know, when, when it's going to be... Anarchy, man. You know? So, 
you know, with that, I want to give all praise to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. I like to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect. Shalom.